Hey folks, Paul Perez here in Saxland, and I've got a couple more goodies for you that uh, the Mr. 3G's himself, the groovy grandpa Gary, sent me to do a little uh, demonstration for you all. And uh, you know, before I continue, just to let you all know that I'm not a paid endorser of his mouthpieces. I've enjoyed playing uh, Sugals for probably 20 years now. I've discovered for myself that they have certain qualities that I just find in a, in a Sugal that I can't find in any other mouthpiece. And uh, I, you know, my introduction to him was the Sax Journal, probably in the late 90s where there was a picture of a wooden mouthpiece in a tree. And he was, that was his ad for the Grenadilla wood. And then eventually I saw some pictures of um, the gold plated with the blue sparkle bite plate, which, you know, who doesn't love that blue sparkle bite plate, man? And uh, I mean, for me personally, that blue sparkle reminds me of uh, my older brother's drum set, uh, Ludwig drum set that was blue sparkle. So when I, every time I see those uh, bite plates, it takes me back to a place you know, when I'm five, six years old watching my brothers play. So it's a happy spot for me. Uh, after that, you know, I always wondered how people got to the place where they were endorsing mouthpieces or being able to, to uh, play um, uh, some of the merchandise that's available for everybody. And uh, what I find is if you're diligent and you practice and you get to a certain level, um, people are happy to, to, to send you things to try. And, I was looking at some uh, some mouthpieces that Gary had on eBay. I had him send me a couple to try. And um, in the course of our conversation about those mouthpieces, he said, you know what, I've got something here that I think you really love. And that's when I got the, the first silver mouthpiece that I bought. And um, that one still is one of my favorites of all time. Uh, after that, uh, I, I asked for some other mouthpieces to try, and Gary was very generous with his time and, and his mouthpieces. And uh, we decided to get together at the NAM show a couple of years ago, and you've seen videos of that demonstrating uh, the 3D and uh, the wooden mouthpiece, which is also one of my favorites of all time. <laughs> From that meeting, we have been uh, corresponding and talking, and uh, he does s send me mouthpieces on occasion to, to try just to get my feedback and see how they're playing. Uh, and when I do find a mouthpiece that I just have to own, you know, I ask him uh, what it's going to cost me because I, I, you know, I, I realize now after playing for a while that nothing is free. Um, you know, we have this idea that if they make the saxophone, they can just give me one. But it's costing them some money to make it, and, uh, you know, there's time and effort involved. And there's no reason that anybody should just hand you anything, because it does cost um, people something to make their product. And I guess, you know, from our musician standpoint, you can think of it as, would I go play a gig for free? <laughs> just because uh, you're, you're good people. I mean, sometimes we do that, but if you're making a living at it, uh, giving away your wares doesn't make sense. You know, that's just not a, a smart thing to do in the long run because I think people start to expect it and so on and so forth. And musicians are always uh, looking, in, you know, in need <laughs> somehow. So you got to be careful with uh, how many pieces you give away because you could give a lot away if you gave it to every cat that was hurting for, you know, having a tough time or could use a spare mouthpiece, whatever. Anyway, he sends me these pieces to try and if there is ever a mouthpiece that I love, uh, you know, I buy it. Um, and I have, you know, quite a handful now because some of the ones that he sent, some of them I just have to keep because they're that good. And uh, so I have a handful <laughs> at home, and uh, I like to play them. I think some sac some of us get bored with how we sound, or or just want to sound different. Um, so uh, the latest batch that uh, I've received was uh, Gary was very excited about producing three solid silver mouthpieces, and you can see one of them, the tenor mouthpieces here. Uh, this is a 925 solid silver mouthpiece. 
And what I notice about this mouthpiece right away is there's a quality in silver, and I found this in every silver mouthpiece that I've played, that makes it real smooth sounding. They're like there's a there's a nice halo around the sound. They're not as big and as bold as any kind of brass or stainless steel, but they do have a quality to them that is inherent only in solid silver mouthpieces. At least that's been my experience. I know a lot of people say it all sounds the same and there's no difference between material and all of that. But when I play this, what I notice is that I want to lean towards a certain direction. And the direction is beautiful. It's like I want to play beautifully. I want to play more standards. I don't want to play funk and hard hitting stuff with these mouthpieces because the silver, it just has a, a prettier quality, like the way that it looks. It's a beautiful mouthpiece. Um, so when I finally got a read in the setup that I like, the first thing that I wanted to do was this kind of thing. style of playing, I don't think you can find much that will sound better than that. Now, that to me is the, the place that this mouthpiece really shines. I've tried to blow some of the stuff that you've heard me play before, and when I push this mouthpiece too hard... <laughs> to push back at me a little bit and uh, you know some of the other sugals that I have they just go so this mouthpiece in my mind is really for um, the jazz guy that's looking for that unique quality that has something to it has something to offer that I don't hear in other mouthpieces so like I say every time I'm playing this mouthpiece <laughs> because it really is that gorgeous ringing singing quality to it. And to me, uh, I describe it as kind of a sultry shimmer, <laughs> you know, kind of a, uh, there's just something about it that makes you want to play beautiful. So, uh, and I don't know if you, how well this is going to translate in, in the recording, but it's a really gorgeous sound and there's a certain mute around the edges here that makes it real easy on the ears, even when I'm pushing it here. I mean, I'm pushing it pretty hard, and it still has got that nice quality around it. But I find that to be only in silver mouthpieces. Brass would just get bigger and bolder. So if this is something that you're interested in that quality, and you're going to play a lot of nice jazz. This would be something definitely to t to, at, to call uh, Gary about and see what he's got for you. So uh, there you have it: the sound of a solid silver mouthpiece.